all about spontaneity, isn't it? Thank you for being with us, my friends and family here in the live studio audience, and for all of you watching back in your rooms. I'm your cruise host, Jason, and welcome to another edition. There's a camera behind you. Welcome to another edition of All Access Pass. I'm very glad to have you. Whether you're here live or watching, you know that each one of these is me sitting with an absolute legend, and today is certainly no exception. We are blessed and honored to have with us the one and only Miss Evelyn Champagne King. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. Thanks so much for being fans as well. Thank you. The, the, I think the disco cruise, and what's kind of unique about it is there are fans, and then there's fans, right? You, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. There's, oh, yeah. there's music fans, and then there's fans. fans. Yeah. And I, I feel like the disco cruise is really fans. Like, yeah. you know, it's kind of, I don't want to use a rude word, but there's a little bit of a niche to it. It's kind of like jazz and things like that. But it does, it, it's music's music, and it's, right. it's beautiful because all ages, all walks, all That's types, right. uh, as you've heard me say many times, because we've done these before, yeah. it's not black, it's not white, it's not no. gay, it's not straight, no. it's, it's everybody. Everybody. It, it's everybody, and I think that's what the beauty of this cruise is. What's it like for you knowing your fans are every walk of life and just love you the way they do? What's that feel like? Well, I kind of freak out sometimes. <laughs> Excuse me. What have you been singing all week? What's wrong? Well, with you? no, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> I know my voice is a little, you know, rough, but sounds good to me. It's strong, so you'll hear me. The only thing that freaks me out sometimes they can bum rush you. You know, you get those fans. Sure. You get some that want to pull your hair and see if it falls out. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. I get some that also have had. I, I went on stage a couple of times before I went on stage. I'm heading up the stage, and they pulled my, I had a wig, you know, just to disguise myself a little bit. Didn't work. Um, <laughs> had on a wig, and my wig ended up being sideways before I performed, so <laughs> another fan let me know. Push it over a little bit, Evelyn, just yeah. push it over. Did oh, that. Oh, yeah, drug fix drug it up, fix it up. You can hit the stage, okay. And then you have some that are just, oh, we just love you. Just so calm, sure. you know, but my main thing is I appreciate that I have I capture everyone, mm -hmm. and that's my goal. Yeah. Because I want you to love, I mean, music is good for the soul. We already know that. But also, when you get the kids, when you capture the sure. kids, even though they're like, I mean, I get some five and six telling me, we love Love Come Down. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> You've heard it? My mom plays it every yeah. day, you know. And I know how to do this dance, and I'm like, no, 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 stop. That's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and I know grown. that yes, I know that they're watching, you know, TV. Sure. I know that they're watching the TV dance moves and all that. But I really love watching the kids love songs, and they even some of them come up, and they could be like nine or ten. They'll come up and say things like, you know, that beat, that groove. So you know that they're really listening yeah, music-wise. They're hearing things, and they also go, what, what did you say on this part? These things you don't expect. Sure. You expect it from an older person sure. saying that or asking that question. But the little kids, they're trying to capture what you're doing because either they want to be a part and do the same kind of thing. They want to write. You know, I yeah. talk to all, all walks of life. And it's, it's so humbling. I go home, but I have no ego about it. I'm letting you know that. My husband thinks I should. <laughs> you, not, not in a negative, but at the same time, He's more right. of, you know, like, you know who you are, wife? And I'm going, yeah, you know who you are, husband? You know, we're entertainers. We're musicians. We're, we're writers. We're, you know, producers, whatever we have to do in music to keep us going because this is our life. Yeah. But, yeah, I go home and just go. I mean, I hear me on the radio and I turn on another channel. I already heard me before. <laughs> like, I've heard this one. Yeah. I heard me, yeah. you know. But I, I enjoy it. Don't think I'm not appreciative of what I do. It's just that I know that there's other music I can listen to. Well, I don't think that makes, I don't think anyone thinks you don't appreciate it. it what it makes you is, is humble. And yeah. I think that's something that we get a lot of stars. I mean, you and I have done countless cruises together at this point, And we've had a lot of stars of every walk of life and, ty yeah. and type and size and, you know, oh, yeah. historical significance and, and momentary significance in the middle. And a humble nature, I find a lot of, you, and I'm going to say you in a general term, in terms right. of artists that have made it right. and continued to make it. Right. One of the big parts about continuing to make it is staying humble with your fans yeah. and staying connected to your fans. And that, that's, a, that's a, a common tie with, I mean, 
I, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm chatting with uh, Robert Cool Bell tomorrow, and if you don't, if you've never love seen him, love him. Cool in person, exactly the same way. And I could Very go on real. down the list. Yeah. Relatable, humble. Very real. Uh, appreciate who's sitting out here and giving you their time. That's right. Um, what does it mean to you to know that wherever you perform in the world, people are giving you that time? Is that does that resonate with you, or do you like shy away from that a little bit? I, I do shy away a little bit, but it does re resonate because they speak different languages. I mean, I travel around the world. So, I mean, especially when I'm in the UK, I mean, they go completely bonkers over my music, you know, and I'm enjoying them, enjoying the music so much. I totally forget that I'm Evelyn and I must be <laughs> Evelyn's fan. Do you get what I'm saying? I, yeah. I end up turning it around on myself sometimes because I'll be like, wow, oh yeah. And, and I'm going, oh, it's me. <laughs> Look, looking behind you. like yeah, I, to <laughs> I do totally do some wild stuff. It freaks them out because they're going, wow, Evelyn, we're talking about you. And I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, but it's not, it's like I said, it's not where I, I carry an ego over my shoulder. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm better. No, I'm human. That's number one. I am human as I don't know what. Like, when I drop it like it's hot, it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do, you do drop it like it's awfully hot. I, 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 yeah, I, I do. Anyone who's watched your show, which I'm assuming everyone in the, in the <laughs> live audience and probably most of the folks on TV, you're, no, you're, not a, you're not timid on stage. I know, and I'm not 15 anymore either. No, you're a tigress. You attack, That's right. And, and I love it. I'm a cougar tiger. Yeah, <laughs> tell Freddie that. Tell Freddie that. Yes, let Freddie please tell my husband that. Listen, Freddie. Well, you guys have been together 30... 32 years. 32 years. That's awesome. I celebrated that 32, and the only thing about it was he ended up getting sick on our anniversary. Oh. So he had the flu. Did you try to get rid of him? No. no. <laughs> Something in the pork chop. Don't, don't, don't tell him. <laughs> no. no, but he got sick. Oh, no. He had the flu on our anniversary, so we couldn't do anything. So it was like, oh, I felt really bad, and I was sitting there waiting for a card. You know how we are, ladies. <laughs> I was waiting for a card, and I was going, okay. What is husband going to do tonight? Then I was going, okay, what am I going to do? Because it's not just about one person. Even Valentine's is not about one of us. It's about both of us. And I see a lot of people going, well, you're supposed to do. I'm like, that was back in the day. I ain't got time for that. It's, we're in 2020-something. So what we're supposed to do is, you care for me, I care for you. Let's, okay, let me make a dinner. No, I think we should go out. So I was waiting for husband to go, let's go out. I didn't feel like cooking. I was already taking care of him, you know, making sure he was okay. But it was just actually inside. I was going, if we sat together in a restaurant, if we sat together in my home, you know, together, we sit in our home, that's enough. I can look in your eyes and know that you still love me and we love each other and we're still there. That's the way I've been taking my life these days because tomorrow's not promised. I see Whoa. too many lose... Let's lose you, their you, spouses. You've lived a life. Oh, yeah. You, I've already been gone four times. You've and, lived and a life. I haven't reached exactly there. Well, I ain't going there. I'm going up there. I don't know what that is down there. But I don't, <laughs> and I'm not asking you to get into that, but I nope. know people may not know that you, you have led a heck of a life in terms of, of, yeah. of, of tragedies. Of tragedies. And, Lots of tragedies. The first was losing my child. Yeah. She was two years old. And a lot of people aren't aware of that. And then they go, oh, Heartbreaking. Oh, you know, you didn't have any more kids. Well, I can't. I don't need to get into specifics, but I can't have any more children. But I ended up marrying a man that accepted me for me. Mm. And he knew all the things because we talked about it once we was dating that two weeks. <laughs> that two-week conversation. <laughs> that two-week conversation <laughs> when I had him in the living room of my apartment. <laughs> and I made him some spaghetti because I wanted him to come over for dinner. You know, I made, that was my number one dish that I made. That was your go-to? That was my go-to. He went in and had that, you know, had his dinner, and we discussed us. And then, you know, what is your life like? You know, I wanted to get to know. You don't know everything about a person. You still got ways to go, you know. And I listened to him about his life and ways from Tennessee. He heard mine. He got a little <laughs> weirded out because I'm from the Bronx. He was like, oh, no, roughneck. You know, no, no, no. No, because it's a balance there, you know? I mean, we got Tennessee, we got somebody to balance you out. So my whole family was like, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? You know, my dad, at, believe me, my dad didn't approve for a minute. He was on the phone with my husband. This is before he met him. And he called him every mother under the sun. 
He said, you probably just like all them other mother bleep, bleep, bleeps. And I was on the other end. He didn't know. And I was listening. And I, started, I was like, no, this is different. I fell in love with my husband first sight. It does happen. So I just knew that I wanted that man on that stage. You can look at it on, on YouTube. It's on Unsung. So I don't want to give you a long story because I want you to watch. Okay? You, you guys are, first of all, you're a beautiful couple. Thank and we you. love having you guys. Thank you. I mean, he's exceptionally talented, too. Like, that yes, he is. Lost. He's a star in his own That's right. That's a talented man. Jason, yeah. I don't know if you remember, but Freddie has a Grammy. Oh, yes, I do know this. He has yeah. a Grammy. I was just trying to make Al this about Joe. you. <laughs> there you go. But <laughs> it's about, it's about uh, music yeah. and all walks of it. He shows me and teaches me smooth jazz, contemporary jazz, you know, his side. And I let him hear mine because he did not know shame. He did not know Evelyn Champagne King at all. That made me want this man. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say, though, there's appeal in that. There's appeal there in that no one's dating the he image. He just saw my legs. That was it. <laughs> no joke. Dropped it like it was hot? He said, no, <laughs> I didn't have to drop it. I just walked. I had to act like I was going to the ladies' room. Yes, you're doing something. Yeah. Yeah, and I had to swing my little maxi coat because I had on a mini. <laughs> Freddie looked up and I was like, got you, sucker. I got I knew what I want. I know what I want. <laughs> I might, you know, and, but that's that's the side of him that tells, you know, he tells me, oh my God, I'm married a rough neck. I said, stop telling people that. I'm from the Bronx, but we know we come everybody to me come from a hood. We all come from a poor, you know, sure. living up living, you know. And then all of a sudden we make it if we're in the middle or the top. But I know where I come from. And I'm proud of that because there's not just me. There's J Lo. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of us. Leash Key. There's a lot of us come from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And then by a way of Philadelphia, raised in Philly. Yes, Philly. Raised How, in Philly. When did you leave the Bronx? So when did you go to? Philly? I left the Bronx. I was uh, 11. We went there at 12. Okay. I was 12. That's when you moved to Philly. That's when okay. I moved to Philly. Sorry, keep going. Yep. Went to Philly. Went from Philly um, and went from Philly. Got discovered in Philly. I was in a local band at 14. In South Philadelphia. Please tell your discovery story. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting there. No, I'm getting there. <laughs> it's I'm my getting, favorite story. I knew you was waiting my for that. Story. Uh, but I'm getting there. But yeah, I wanted just to just to go back to what you were saying as far as the, you know, the tragedies. I'm gonna jump to that real quick yes, and finish it. After losing my daughter, I end up losing my mom and dad in 1997, and then I lost my sister in 2015, and. Uh, Prior to that, 1997, I lost mom, dad, and a brother that traveled with me on the road. All three of them, all of them traveled with me on the road. And I even had my daughter on the road with me. I had her in my tour bus, you know, and it was where that was the last of my touring with the bus. But I had my daughter there because they said, Evelyn, we don't, she had severe brain damage. They took her out a little too early. So she had hardly any oxygen left. But that's my child. I'm going to take her and I'm going to take care of her. Yeah. I took care of her for a whole year and the record company let me go for a whole year just to do what I had to do. But I know that my, I know now that God has given me my child for her to be here for me huh. as long as she could. And that's all I can deal with. Well, but I know, you. I know they're watching. She was blessed to have you too. Yes. You know that. Right? Yes. Okay. Because I cared for her. Yes, ma'am. But. I, I lost, and then we just, you know, we take some time and get back up again because I know that they wouldn't want me to do anything but that and keep their family name going, even though I am a fox now. But my name, my stage name is still Evelyn Champagne King. Yes. <laughs> uh, without going too much deeper into this, because no I know problem. it's personal for you, um, you have a beautiful and wonderful energy and spirit. Yes. And you say you credit that to knowing they would want you to go on. Yes. But you have to maintain that level of energy and spirit. That's true. Do you do, you do any practices or what do you do to maintain no, that? I don't practice at you all. You just have that. And my husband freaks out. He goes, what's wrong with you? You're supposed <laughs> to practice. You, I said, who said? I got this gift from who God. Said? <laughs> who said? No, no. I mean, yeah. I understand what he's saying because sure. when we listen back to, I ain't going to say no names, but some artists, and we're, we're going, what is going on? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's true. We all know that. Y'all are fans. I'm a fan. Absolutely. And when you hear artists and you got to go pay your money to hear it, and it's like, what? I could have listened to the record and just stayed home. And it would have been better. 
it would have been better. But when you do things in the studio, I feel like this. If you're going to do what you do in the studio, you better be able to project it on stage. I don't care. I don't care. And I and back then when I came out, there was no, you know, doing all auto that tune. little Memorex, auto-tune, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. I had had none of that. T-Life will tell you. Uh, John Fitch will tell you. He's the songwriter of, of Shame. Ruben Cross will tell you. Um, all of, the, all of the, the songwriters would let you know. Even Kashif, God bless his soul. Mm -hmm. Kashif would let you know. I went in and they said, Evelyn, just sing the song. Sing the song down. You know, do what you do. And I did it, and I left. Yeah. And it was time, you know. Time is money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you gotta do and get out. I was like, We're yeah, I gotta go home, wash some clothes, eat some food, <laughs> work out. I got things to do. And I hear I'm a teenager, mm. you know. I didn't even get a chance really to hang out with friends. I didn't have very many friends because I was really a loner, believe it or not. I'm very, I, I was it. very. No, you don't. I do. Because I know you don't believe. I was very shy. Well, that I don't believe, but... I was very shy, and it was really scary because I was, you know, shunned away, but yet when I hit the stage, that's my life. I love doing what I do, but when you, I was backstage, they was like, even uh, Mike Douglas, Merv Griffin, uh, Dinah Shore, they were looking for me, and I'm standing right there, and they was going, where's little Evelyn? And I'm standing there, hello, I'm right here, I'm ready to sing. My dad said, she's right there. They was looking for... They said they were looking for a 30 pound, you know, some, you know, a 30 year old woman, probably a heavy set woman, to sing Shame. And I went, no, it's me. So when I had to get up there, it was really, you could see it if you look at the videos from back in the day. Even when I'm, the way I'm playing the Cougars and doing the kick, it was like, oh, I'm doing it stronger now. I think of all that and it's, it's, it's a blessing. It truly is a blessing to be here with you guys. It really is. It's a journey. Yeah, it is. It's a journey. A long, <laughs> a long one. Now, I got to bring you back around to it because it's one of my, I love asking you about your, uh -huh. your discovery and, <laughs> and your launch. Talk a little bit about, I think it's such a great story. I think it is too because a lot of people got it wrong. They yeah. think I got discovered in a tub. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like in the toilet, sitting in the bathroom. You know, how am I going to get, now who's coming in there like that? Uh -uh. Yeah. No. Just belting away. I was, that belting away. Yeah. My sister Wanda, who passed on in 2015, was supposed to be working with my mom and dad at Philly International, Sigma Sounds in Philadelphia. Um, she could not make it one day, so she was, you know, ill, taken ill that day. So they asked me, would I be able to change, you know, come in for a spot? And I went, no problem. Now, I have a habit of singing everywhere I do something, you know, cleaning. And my mom would hum. So it would be, hmm, and I'm just singing whatever. But I just started singing a Sam Cooke song, A Change Is Gonna Come, by Sam Cooke, while vacuum cleaning. As I came out of the men's room, I was still singing, but someone ended up being there, which his name is T-Life, Theater Life, as they call him. He's a songwriter, producer. You heard of Billy Paul and all of the other groups back in the day, Teddy and all of them. He wrote and produced and did things for them. And I'm like, you know, I'm walking out and I'm singing, Change Gonna Come. And all of a sudden, this tall, dark, and handsome man came in, had a little head wrap, real cool, you know, looking really musician like. You know? <laughs> and I was like, first of all, I was saying, uh oh, I, yeah. first of all, I don't know him. I don't know him. Uh, he shouldn't be in here. Because my mother said, we're gonna go in and we get out. My dad was maintenance, my mom was a cleaning woman. Okay. He just walked up and said, one day I'm gonna make you a star. And I'm like, you know, and I just kept. Yeah, right. And I kept vacuuming. So then he must have went around and found my mother because she said, yeah, that was my daughter singing, you know. So he said, I'm going to make you a star. And I just kept vacuuming like, I don't know this man. Sure. Yeah. And it ended up happening where when I heard myself on the radio, everybody was out of our home that we was in a, a nice little apartment. And I heard myself on the radio. I heard, D -d 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 -d. and I passed out. <laughs> I, told I passed story. out, and then when I came to, I was just screaming around the house. I'm on the radio. I'm on. It was gone by then, you know, so nobody believed me. And then here I am. Here I am. That's amazing. I love that story. So it is true. <laughs> Dreams come true. As you know, I like to open up questions for the audience so they can yes. fill these out as we come in. Got a couple for you here. Uh, Jan from Columbia. 
uh, Columbia, South Carolina, matter of fact. Oh, wow. Yeah, not quite the other Columbia. <laughs> okay. um, when you are not touring, what do you do? <clears throat> uh oh. <laughs> when I'm not touring, honestly, what I do is I just stay home and be a loving wife, a caring mom to my doggie, which is a Maltese, and to my husband, a caring wife. I love to cook. I love to sit in my backyard and chill. I love TV. <laughs> what's, you your put guilty, what's your guilty lifetime, TV Lifetime, television lifetime. for women. <laughs> Boy, y'all some crazy people. That's all I got to say. There's some crazy people in the world There's doing the movies. Yeah. yeah, but I watch that and husband act like he's not watching upstairs. I'm downstairs with the dog and he acts like he's not watching. All of a sudden he comes out, did you see that? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, I knew you was watching. Oh, I don't watch that because all the women are always murdering the men. Really? Y'all know that's not true, ladies. But yeah, I sit up, do that. I play video games. I'm a video game fanatic. Are you? Yeah, I didn't tell you this. No, I did not know this. I about got discovered, you. RCA, the band would go out, you know, after we did a concert. The band would go out and hang, you know, after shows and meet some women, you know, those that weren't married, because I would tell the ones that are married, stay inside. It'd be <laughs> tell nice. Them. Looks bad, you know. <laughs> But they go do what they want. But they went out, and I would go, I don't want to be out. I want to play some video games. What was your go-to? Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Galaga. Yeah. Um, what is that little thing that bounced around? Yeah, Q-Bird. Q there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All, I, but I, I, that's what I do. I even go online. I used to go online and beat little kids. They shouldn't even be up. <laughs> and you know the live thing? They should not even be up. And I'm going, what are y'all doing? You hear them cussing and all this. I had the live thing going. I'm sitting there watching TV. Cursing out kids yeah, as you feed them. Well, well, I tried not to say any swear words. You said you tried. I tried not to start saying things. And I'm like, get your little ass in bed. Y'all should be in bed, you know? But you're seeing a change in yourself, you know? Little the older I got, I'm like, wow, I'm a grown woman on here with kids playing a video <laughs> Little does that kid know they're being cursed out by Evelyn Champagne by Evelyn, King. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but then they really found out when the, uh, oh, God, Grand Theft Auto came out. Yeah. I'm in there. You're in there, yeah. My songs is in there. In the car, when I found out is when I was playing the game. And I went, that's me. So the first thing I was looking for was, where's my check? Royalty check. You know. <laughs> found out. <laughs> I did find out I had a check, so I did look on my royalty statement. I seen it, and then I was like, oh, well, another one came out? It's there. I'm good. <laughs> yep, yeah, I mean, you get the good people behind you, you know, things can go smoothly. What are or were your top three or so performance venues? Where do you love to play? That's hard. Can be city, can be city, can be city, country, state, whatever you want. Okay. Where do you love to play? Well, definitely the Forum New York. Mm. Um, the Forum, and I could say the, in, in London, mm. I do love to perform in London. Um, it's so hard. Is there the a Greek theater was fun. Yeah. But they got to call me again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what happened? I ain't not. Well, you know, that, that, you do know. You have, do you have a place you performed that blew you away that you weren't expecting to? Again, city, state, country, whatever. Japan, well, when I went to Tokyo, yes. Tokyo. When I went to Tokyo. I mean, the guys was coming up, and I'm just on stage, and they were coming up, and they were talking. I understand nothing they were saying. But they was just, when it came to singing, yes. they know every single word. word. And, I, and I looked down, and <laughs> I just make sure, I mean, they just humble all over you. Yeah. I mean... But it was a lot of guys, and I was like, some of cute stuff, but I was like, look, I got a husband, okay? Y'all need to back up a little bit. You know, they were, you know, I mean, really, really chummy, lovey, and all this. And, but that was shocking because I didn't expect it. But, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of places I was told even that, you know, hey, Ev, you got to come. I got to come to Italy. Sure. Italy. I got to go, first of all, because I know I cook good spaghetti. <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> it's going to be on. Oh, you're going to bring your I spaghetti want recipe to no, Italy. No, yeah. I'm going to try and find a way where I can find, like, the serious chef in this restaurant. And I'm going to make it a way we can challenge each other. Okay. Because I, I mean, know I could cook. Now I want your spaghetti. Okay. Uh, Vicky, who comes from uh, Pottstown, PA, what made you relocate from Philadelphia? Parents? No, lifestyle. They needed all, We all needed a change. Gotcha. We all needed a change. 
And uh, my thing was, I was first of all humbled that when I first got enough money to take care of my mom and dad, mm. I bought them a home. So was that your that I made was it my moment? gold? Huh? Was that your I made? Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Was that an I made it moment for you, being able to take care of your parents? It could have been better. I'll put it like that. Sure. That I could have did more for them and myself. But what I ended up doing, I moved around the corner. <laughs> What a mistake. What? The reason why it was a mistake because my brothers came over there having their girlfriends over. I'm like, well, you know what? <laughs> you became the this, flop house. I became, yeah. <laughs> I became a, a Airbnb, whatever yeah, you call yeah, it, AR, Air, whatever Airbnb. you call that thing. It was, it was hilarious. But at the same time, I didn't want to leave my mom and dad, yeah. you know. But yeah, I bought them their home. I bought my mom a Cadillac Seville. And I was proud. I mean, the Does thing is, so? yeah, I mean, if you could do whatever you could do for them to let them know, look, you bought me in this world, number one. Right. And from that day on, I appreciate you because I love you unconditionally. No matter how much sometimes we wish, you know, oh, I'm so sick of my parents. I'm mad. I mean, I got beat down sometimes. I had to crawl under the bed because <laughs> I, I was a bad girl. It. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's things. I just felt humbled to do something for them. At the same time, even though at that time I was getting ripped off, which a lot of us A lot did. of artists. A lot of yeah, us did. A lot of artists. But I had to, you know, you have to learn. It's, it's a learning process. Business. It's a business. But be, to being grateful for T-Life discovering me and he, having an ear and saying, hey, I got this artist. My dad, number one, for letting them know who I was. Sure. And that's it. Love that. Ed, who comes to us from New Jersey, I would, like Jersey. To, I would like to specifically know what section of Philly you lived in. I lived in West Philly on 57th and Apple Tree Street. Very specific. 61st really? and Walton. Got well, Walton. I'm sorry. I didn't know where that was. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't. I only, okay. I only knew where Arch. Yeah, Arch Street. And where the, the cheesesteaks were. That's all I knew. And, and in South do. Philly in order to go to rehearsal. I'm telling you, I went to West Philly High. I went from home, West Philly High. I went to school. I went to rehearsal, back to, you know, get a cheesesteak <laughs> and come home and do what I had to do. I was very, I just kept to myself so I could stay out of trouble. It was a lot going on out there. A lot. Ed also wants to know where in New Jersey were you living? Oh, I live two places in New Jersey. <laughs> this one was the weird one. I lived in Wyckoff, New Jersey. Heard of that? There you go. I lived in Bergenfield. Okay, now Bergenfield is where I was with my daughter, and I had my daughter with me. When I moved to Wyckoff, it was a police station right across the street. My whole house was robbed while I was on the road for two months. There you go. Y'all know what that feels like. My mom came back. We came back off the road after two months, and it was a glass of milk, two glasses of milk, <laughs> and, and like saucers sitting there like that, and I had a sandwich. So cookies. Filled out. Santa Claus did yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, they had, yeah, somebody Santa did Santa Claus it. broke in. Yeah. We went over there to ask. They ain't see nothing. I ain't know nothing. I'm like, you know what? This is, I, I moved right out of there, too. Tina from Newark. Have you ever performed at the Peppermint Lounge in East Orange? I don't know. <laughs> it's been a I have to look it up. I don't know. I don't recall the Peppermint Lounge. I don't. All right. Uh, Adrian from New York. What were you? Well, we kind of already answered this. Okay. What were you doing when you heard your song went number one? <laughs> Fainted. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard it went number one, really, I did not believe that that was going to be the one to go number one. Because I don't know if it's right was recorded first, which I'm making sure everybody know because everyone thought it was Shane that was recorded Shane first. first yeah. And like I told you on the, you know, that came to the show, I was 14 going on 15 when I sang both of these songs. And it was just in awe because I'm singing about, I don't know if it's right. And, sure, yeah. <laughs> Dad wasn't approving of all yeah. that, you know, grown stuff. Yeah. And my parents was like, no, you don't know if it's right because it ain't right. You know, but then, then shame, you know, mama just don't understand how I love my, what man? That was my father. What? <laughs> but you guys, <laughs> at the same time, they were right there, right there. 
as strong as they can be as parents, and I appreciated it, because a lot of people don't get a chance to have their parents with them or someone that's going to guide them. But my parents was right there, but T-Life and my dad was always at it in the studio. He was like, man, you got us singing that guy. Man, it's going to be all right. It's going to be a hit. I tell you, it's going to be a hit. Here I am. So, Here you are. It's cool. Dad knows. Uh, cool. Kurt from Dayton, Ohio, I think we kind of answered yours there. His question was, uh, what was it like when you heard your songs for the first time? Fainted. Okay. Uh, Sean from New York City and New Jersey has some interesting questions here. Uh -oh. He's going to put you directly on the spot. Pick one. Michael Jackson or Prince? Oh, definitely Prince. I love Michael. But Prince was my idol. You're good. Prince was one of my idols. So was Michael Jackson. It's a difference because there was... I, I took uh, Prince's stage presence and brought it to me because I'm a female. I know that I don't play all the instruments yet. Yet. I do play drums. Mm -hmm. I play kungas. I play drums. I got a drum set at home. I got to work on playing it and doing what I got to do. I used to do it when I first started. They would open the curtain and I'd be playing a little snippet of shame, you know, and some gigs. But it's Prince because what he brought to the stage was just him. No one taught him nothing. He did what he felt you would love. And that's the way I love to protect my crowd. Mm, I like that. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson or Lawrence Fishburne? Actually, both. They are both awesome. There you go, Sean. We're Sean. Off of, Sean. Awesome We're actors. In. Awesome actors. Uh, most importantly, Sean wants to know, and as a video game fan, you'll actually probably yeah. know this one, Marvel or DC? Marvel. The Marvel Universe or the DC? DC is Superman, Batman, etc. cetera. No. Marvel is Iron Man, yada, yada, yada. DC. DC. Batman. Oh, oh you lost sorry. Him. You lost Sean. Sean wanted you on Thor and uh, Iron Man. Yes, DC. Yeah, I'm sorry. Batman, baby, Batman. Uh, John from New York has a great question for us to kind of wrap things up a little bit. Yeah. What are your plans going forward for the rest of this year and uh, upcoming? Um, God willing, I'm able to, uh, you know, keep going along, you know, with uh, the music scene because it changes every day. And I don't want you to think that Evelyn has, you know, just sitting back, giving up, you know, because a lot of people don't understand what we got to go through. It's not just, you know, put a record out and, yeah. You know, Ta -da. here you are. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't go like that. I want to be in a mental state where I get the right songs or something that I know is going to appeal to you from Evelyn. Not me trying to sound or be like anyone else, but I'm trying to listen to see what's going on. It's not my flow. So if I can't, I mean, I y'all seen me. I did a little rapping, you know, but it's not my flow. It's not me. I'm a singer. I was given a gift that is, is uh, where I'm going to sing to give you the love of, of slow jams or, or danceable music, but I want it to be coming from Evelyn. So I want to be able to get back in the studio, which I'm working on with my husband. We're working on doing something, even if it's you know a love song together and something about what's going on. It's got to be something that is kept to your ear, you know, and to let you dance. You know, I want to be able to make sure it's right. That I want to do, as well as I've always wanted to be a DJ. <laughs> I did. I always wanted to be a DJ. I don't know what's going to be, you know, coming forth. I can't plan my future because right now we know that our, but what we can do is try and look forward to going after something that we can do. And what I can do is just be a mentor to a lot of the youngsters out there. If I can, you know, if they want to hear me, you know, just let them know, look, these things happen to us. I've had fibroids. Listen, let the girls know these things happen. This almost kills you. This, you know, things are going on. Pay attention. Don't just go out and party and think that it, the world is okay because it's not. Because your every turn when you walk out the door at a certain age to be on your own, <laughs> it's hard. And we've already went through some tough times. This is harder for our children of today. So all I can do is just share what I've learned or even what I'm learning with you. And I want to just keep going forever. And I want people to remember me as just the bubbles you see right now. <laughs> I love that you said that because usually we get the question, where did champagne come from? Bubbles. <laughs> My mom when I, my mom told me when I was born, she just seen nothing but spit bubbles coming out my mouth. 
I guess I wanted to sing. Charming, you know? yeah. Because <laughs> I was trying to sing. So, <laughs> But she said, I saw nothing but spit bubbles coming out. And I just said, oh, bubbles. And champagne. Okay, bubbles they was trying to bring into the equation of the Evelyn King. That just don't. No, I'm not <laughs> stripping for no yeah. Up next to the stage, Up next bubbles. bubbles. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't even barely strip for my husband. I ain't got time having the time. But, I mean, you got to think of that. I'm like, how does that sound? Evelyn Bubbles, can no, it didn't work. So my husband, I mean, my mom, dad, and T-Life was trying to decide, you know, well, well, which sounds better? Mom said champagne. T-Life agreed. Pop agreed. Mom agreed. They all huddled. It was like, that's going to be the name. When I came out with it, the record company took it off, you know, off of the I'm in love. You see Evelyn King. Evelyn I'm like, King, yeah. I'm on the road. I come home, that's when I got ripped off, too. The police station didn't notice nothing. Uh, and I'm, I'll come home, and I went, who's that? Not that I don't know my name. My name is first, Evelyn King. Sure. Nickname, family nickname is Bubbles. But I was, I was offended because it was like, this is what's making me, you know? Mm -hmm. Why would you take something away? Oh, we thought it didn't sound old enough. Well, what are you going to put in the middle of that? <laughs> you know, that was my attitude at the time, too. And I was like, no, I think the fans appreciate me the way it was. And they loved it. Right. And here I am. So I'm taking it and putting it back. So it's stamped back as Evelyn well, that's, that's ownership. That's it's important. Right. That's my name. Exactly. That's right. Represent. That's right. Uh, and, and before we get you out of here, what's it like for you being on the disco cruise? You're surrounded with, obviously friends and people you've performed with for, for years and years and years yes. and other entertainers, but you also have all these fantastic yes. fans. What's the, what's the cruising like for you? What it's like is it's, it's very humbling, fun, exciting. Um, sometimes you guys even make me cry because you come back yeah. and you appreciate me even more and more. And you just say, you know, we had to come back because we knew you was on it. We wanted to see you again. We're so grateful to, that you're still here. And, you know, you done gave all your praises and everything on social media, and I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm just humbled by all that. So to see the ones that come up, I mean, the clothing, it freaks me out. <laughs> I love it. Don't think I don't want to wear half of that on stage. Some of the outfits, you know, I was like, I should be wearing that up here doing this thing. You know, but because <laughs> of the disco crew. Stage ready at all uh, times, yeah. But, yeah, but some of the clothes, women, y'all know, we got to find half of this stuff at one of those thrift shops. <laughs> some of them, I tried some of them, they, they don't even go up half a leg. I'm like, you know, <laughs> I got to make some of this stuff. But I'm humbled by all that because, honestly, we had a ball back in the 70s. We lived a life back in the 70s. We did. We had a ball. Some of us are no longer here. And, you know, but it's what you do in your life. I can't tell you what to do in your life. I can only say, like I can say, I can guide the kids. You can guide your kids. But what I did was I danced in the mirror all the time in the 70s. When I did my shows after the show, I played video games. I danced in the mirror. I was back in my room. My bodyguard noticed I even had to lay on the floor to see if it was him, to make sure that was his shoes. Yeah. So it was a lot of things that I did, you know, to see this again. It's, it's, it's exciting all the time. I'm so happy to see a lot of you come back and just, you know, share your stories with me. I, this, I got discovered. I mean, I got married on your song. I got divorced on your song. Yeah. I, got, I made love on your... They tell me some things. I'll be going... Really? They want to share all that? <laughs> but they do. Yeah. We had a ball, and we just have to remember, we're living our life right now, doing the ultimate disco of what we had. Mm. It, we might look different, but our feelings and our memories, and it, it comes right back. So it feels so good. So thank you so much. Beautiful message. Do me a favor, my friends. We got to let this young lady get back to her life. Why? Speaking of all I'm that. having fun. <laughs> well, you got all that wine to get to. Help me thank the fabulous, the legendary Evelyn Champagne King. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you in a bit.
Celebrate the culture, food, and sounds of New Orleans on the 2023 Big Easy Cruise. This festival at sea will feature live performances by Little Feet, Galactic, featuring Angelica Jelly Joseph, Tab Benoit, Irma Thomas, Samantha Fish, Dirty Dozen Brass Band, Leo Nocentelli, Anders Osborne, John Cleary, Tuba Skinny, and many more. Let the good times roll for seven days on the luxurious Holland America Line, New Amsterdam. Sailing November 4th to the 11th, 2023 from Fort Lauderdale with a 24-hour stay in New Orleans and a stop in beautiful Cozumel. Enjoy the very best of New Orleans and see all your favorite artists in world-class comfort. Book your cabin now. Prices start at $19.49 per person. Financing options are available. More info at Big Easy Cruise. Cruise.com.